I'm doing an update on this Row Street Enhancement or Bike Lanes, whatever you want to call it, because I want to see what sort of lessons we can learn for New South Wales. So as you can see, this master plan was finished in 2019. That kind of oval shaped area, that's the Row Street Enhancement. That's what we're going to be looking at. And you can see there's a reasonably extensive network of uh, existing bike infrastructure around the place. A lot of it on road, but some of it off road as principal shared path. Now, uh, the digging up and redeveloping of Row Street has been quite an ungodly mess for the last year or so. And every time I ride, th ride through here, there seems to be uh, some other change to the detours and all the rest of it. And I've usually tried to avoid this as much as possible because, uh, yeah, these detours are really quite messy. But you can see in this stage here, they've gotten to the point where they've got the concrete uh, buffer islands down and uh, they're finishing them off. Now, just can, I, I think a, a big part of the problem with doing this work is it's probably like George Street with the light rail. I imagine there's probably a lot of services under here that they've had to find, move, rebuild, renew, that kind of thing. Because, I mean, these kind of projects are a, a great opportunity to renew, say, old uh, water lines or gas lines or, or uh, sewerage lines that are, you know, 100 years old and falling to bits. Great time to dig them up and uh, put down something new. Uh, you know, so... I think sometimes the, the construction of the bike infrastructure can be very simple, but all the subsurface surface stuff is probably a mess. Now what you'll notice is the, the buffer uh, islands, if you want to call them that, uh, they, they do have some large gaps in them because obviously there's a lot of car parks uh, off street on, uh, on our left. And you can see one of them's coming up here, free, three, three hour parking. Because what the Perth City Council wants you to do is not park on the street. They want you to drive into one of these multi-story car parks and park your car there. And, you know, three hours free parking. Not bad for parking uh, in the CBD, considering what it's like in the per uh, Sydney CBD, for instance. Right? Even in um, uh, suburban Sydney, you know, get an hour's free parking if you're lucky at a, at a Westfield. But, you know, this... Oh, and they've put in this new traffic signal here, that thing on top. Uh, I was trying to figure out what the heck it was because it wasn't activated when I came through. You can see over there, you know, well, maybe not that clearly, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know about that. But anyway, they're, they're doing some work. And you can see that uh, in a lot of these sections, they haven't put down the green paint yet and all the other pavement markings and stuff like that. Uh, I guess we'll see uh, you know, when I'm back next year whether, how, whether they, uh, they get around to doing that. And one of the risks I could see was uh, you know, having to worry about drivers turning across uh, this, this lane, um, either coming in and out of the car parks, uh, you know, is, is a problem. I mean, you can see there's the art gallery of uh, WA's uh, car park over there. And here's a driver coming out of, uh, of the railway car park. So something to watch out for there. Just that usual contention thing. But look, consider this. This is, this is the northern edge of the CBD. And the council has been brave enough to approve and push forward this really massive and complicated um, uh, series of works, which was probably pretty flipping contentious with the local business people and uh, you know uh, all the other stakeholders around here. You consider how gutless Canada Bay Council's been with you know just pushing bike lanes through in suburbia where there is just you know, not the complexity and difficulty of, uh, of, of what they're trying to do here. You know, a couple of people complain about losing the on-street parking uh, outside their house and, oh, the whole project comes to a grinding halt. Whereas here, they're prepared to, you know, close off big chunks of the CBD to, uh, to do this kind of work. I guess they think it's worthwhile. Uh, now, I just thought I would uh, ride up this uh, bike lane that it, it uh, links onto just well, just for the hell of it, because I thought, well, uh, you know, I can see there's a bit of a network here. Let's uh, let's see where it goes. Let's see how it joins up. And yes, it is quite interesting how a lot of these bits of the network in Perth do actually link up with each other. That's a really nice feature of it. Something that's definitely missing in Sydney. You know, there's just so many missing links in the uh, the network. It's not really a network, is it? It's just a series of you know isolated chunks of bike infrastructure here and there. Anyway. Here we're just going to see the last bit of it. So, uh, you know, the new Row Street thing comes in from the right of the screen. You have to cross the road here. And then you're on the uh, this principal shared path, which now follows the railway line down to the Swan River. This would take us down to, um, 
you know, the Burswood Casino and, and stuff like that. Uh, so, yeah, the lessons here, well, obviously, like I said, the master plan was approved in 2019. Work started, I guess, what, a year or two later. The work has taken a very long time. Uh, very complicated work, lots of uh, road closures and footpath closures and detours and diversions, and it's, it's expensive and difficult uh, and probably caused a lot of chaos. But, uh, you know, they've, they've pushed ahead with it. They've, they've, uh, they've been brave. So it'd be nice if we could have the same kind of thing uh, with Sydney councils.